All right, everyone, despite coronavirus taking a bit of a bite out of the economy at the moment, in terms of the stock market at least, it's funny how the stock market isn't the same as Main Street. Until it's dropping, <laughs> then it's the same thing, according to Paul Krugman. Uh, I think that Trump's 2020 chances inch up every time there's a good jobs report or unemployment ticks down, stock market expands, although that's less important, certainly, to the average person, and so forth. Any time that there are good things in the economy, that's part of the general platform that Trump is running on. And you, and you see him beginning to maneuver, actually, into this particular lane, like in his last talk on Fox. A lot of it really revolves around, hey, I'm the guy that's getting things accomplished. Do you feel upset? The economy's going fine. You don't have to like me personally, but, you know, these other doofuses would probably uh, destroy your 401k. That resonates with a lot of voters. We've seen this before, and I think it'll be lopsided, especially, especially in this election. Um, I think that the partisan hype, the, the extreme viciousness that we're seeing from the Democrats especially, begins to get extremely blunted at some point when people realize that the basic premise is orange man bad, okay? Trump is bigoted and inept and doesn't know what he's doing. How is it that a person that's so reprehensibly inept, who's supposedly a dumbass, is managing the economy in such a generally good direction? How is it that we're basically mourning in America again if the person that's, you know, making the economic decisions largely uh, is a total doofus? Well, it doesn't make sense. There's a disconnect there. Now, you got to understand going into an election, 80% of people's votes are already accounted for because a lot of people don't vote out of principle or they're just lazy and won't vote. Their votes are accounted for. They're not voting for anyone. A lot of people are partisan. There's a 99% chance that they're going to put their, their checkbox... Uh, they're going to mark it next to the person based on whether there's an R or a D after their name, and sometimes an L or an I or something else. That's who they're going to vote for. Then you've got people you, you've got people who will vote based on geography. Like let's say Bernie Sanders were the Dem nominee, there would be Vermonters who aren't fundamentally Democrats or even leftists who would vote for him because he's a Vermonter. The same is true. Yeah, there are New Yorkers that vote for Trump because Trump is from Manhattan. <laughs> That's basically how it works. It's funny because Biden has an advantage in, of all places, Delaware, which is small, extremely far left, and largely, in an electoral sense, totally irrelevant. Whereas Donald Trump could compete in New York with just a little bit of swinging of the upstate uh, turnout, potentially. It's possible. It's just not going to happen. Uh, it's too unlikely for me to say that there's even a possibility, but it's still fun to think about. I like when people drop electoral maps and they're like, we're going to have a red California or Texas is going to go blue. Well, no, that's not going to happen. Maybe give it two or three more cycles, you can see some further swinging. But we see the way the paradigm shift is working right now. The Rust Belt in northern New England uh, and, and arguably Florida are going more red. Texas and, and Arizona are the only real places that appear to be inching towards blueness, and I don't think they're doing it quick enough. I think the electoral map will look better for Trump uh, in this election than it did in the last one, most likely. Every time we get a good jobs report, that helps. You had almost twice as many jobs as expected. Their, their estimate was like 130 or something, and it was 200 and something. So blew it out of the water, much better than expected. Now, of course, they will retroactively revise that number, and they tend to revise it a little bit down, but it's still far ahead of the estimation. As a result, unemployment's at a 50-year low. And it's tied for its lowest of Trump's presidency, 3.5%. Which is funny because I remember Obama saying multiple times that 7% unemployment was the new normal and that we'd be lucky to ever see 6 again. And that that was just sort of our... The idea of the Obama admin and of the globalists was we were supposed to bow our heads in silent, smug smiling over the fact that we had achieved great things and slowly retire from our main role on world stage, sink backwards, very solemnly, very grave about it, not complaining at all, so that the American Eagle can fold its wings and go to sleep. That, that was sort of the imagery of the Obama administration. That's one reason why Trump won, because that's not natural to Americans. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I think personally, the American empire, so to speak, has just begun. It's funny when people talk about, well, Rome lasted 200 years. The U.S. has been around about 200 years. We're doomed. The United States wasn't really an empire, so to speak. It wasn't even a great power until the early 1900s. That's only a century. Technically, it wasn't a truly major player until the 1950s. What the fuck are you talking about? Don't worry, we'll do just fine. We've only just begun. The fact is that there are people in the world who do want to demoralize Americans. Some of them are technically Americans. 
Of course, they're multinationalists. They don't really consider themselves to be anything. They probably have 20 different passports, and they claim that they're loyal to whatever country they happen to be in at the time that's having an election, and don't you dare question it, because then you're a hateful, despicable bigot. That's what it seems to be like from some of these people. Very, very interesting now, isn't it? Anyway, uh, I think that Trump uh, is definitely celebrating this. Look, if it were going in the other direction, it would be front page news for a thousand years. Trump mismanages economy. Job market growing at slower pace than it has. Trump obviously bad on economics. Don't vote for Orange Man. By the way, the cat is singing. They, they had their, their race car track time half an hour ago. Now they sort of settled in and she's just whining for no reason. I don't even know why at this point. Probably hungry. I'll give her snacks before the next video, maybe. Uh, Trump will probably win re-election based on this. He doesn't need anything other than the good economy, technically speaking. But he's got more than that. The wall's being built. I find it funny when Bernie fans try to gaslight me into thinking there's only been a mile of new fence built. <laughs> How wrong you are. I keep up to date on these things. I do that for a living. Just like I know that your Fuhrer is a socialist. He's, he's not a, a, a social democrat. Well, that thing do that doesn't even exist. What you're talking about is a form of capitalism with a welfare state attached to it as a component of socialism. But he's a socialist. He believes in full nationalization of most key industries uh, and the government being massively expanded because he's a socialist. I don't think the American voters will go for that during a good economy. If the economy were in free fall, I think that the Democrats would clearly have an, an, an advantage because what you would say is things are going in the wrong direction. In a key way, you know, my wallet is thinner than it was, so I'm trying somebody else out. Typically speaking, if the economy is going well, though, people just keep the incumbent. It's the incumbent advantage. I think that that's likely to happen. I guess I don't have to give the cat a snack. I just have to let the cat be in frame. She just wanted to be in a video again. I don't think she was in the other one from earlier. Poor kitty. I know you missed your camera time. It's a grave problem. By the way, you're trying to stop my video a little bit early. That's about all. Peace out.